Good morning to everybody. Uh, now, today, again, the MMPHH is yearly to the human resource development. And now, today, uh, today we have to discuss about the block to uh, managing HIV. There are four, five, six, seven, there are four units. Unit number four is HID for employees. And unit number five is role of energy managers. Unit six is competency mapping. And unit seven is analysis of performance and career planning. So first, uh, try to understand the, what's the, the HRD for employees. And this unit that we have to see it, that HRD conceptual idea, uh, meaning of the uh, definition of the HRD, HRD for managers and the different function of the HRD department uh, and for the, uh, and the role of the, basically the role of the, your, the employee, that part also we have to see. Uh, now, and then number six is uh, the competency mapping that subsequently we have to see. So, okay. Now, HRD uh, for the employees. Here, we have to see first of the meaning. HRD definition, as per the HRD definitions, the author, Ardison and the mayor, asserts, the HRD is the process of increasing the knowledge, the skills and the capabilities of all the people in the society. So, increasing the, enhancing the knowledge here the main objectives of a HR department as in terms of HR. Under the HRM, there is HRD is basically the functional area of HR. So and the other way, the author Nadler is saying HRD is a series of organized activities conducted within a specified time and designed to produce behavioral changes. So that is the way also he has tried to explain it. But the behavioral changes in terms of the production, this is what produces. Again, it is skill development, knowledge power, capability. So all these in terms of the, uh, the part of the different activities, the activities are there. And these are organized. These are all the series of organized. That means the calendar year, a lot of training program will be there. HRD program. That is the, basically the activities and conducted by the teacher. Now, other way or there is various way are the definitions are saying. I just collected and try to explain the one by one all the type of definitions so that it can be covered in all the ways. You can, uh, you can remember the things. HRD is a systematic expansion of people's work related abilities focused on the attainment of both organizational and personal goals. So as we know the organizations, there are two things, the, the part of the organization, you can say there is a the macro level and the individual employees, that is, you can say it is a micro level. So both the way development is different and in totality are, uh, you can say the overall development. Another uh, Lincoln and the Charles White, he has described that the, definite, the discipline of HRD is the study of how individual and group are in organizations changes through learning. So there are so many ways uh, we can define uh, HRD. 
So in one sentence, we can see the HRD basically the through this learning process develop. So develop in in terms of your the knowledge. So HRD is the a comprehensive learning system for the release of the organization's human potential. A system that includes both various classroom, uh, then varied uh, stimulated learning experiences and experimental on the job experiences that are a key uh, to the operational uh, reason for survival. This is another they are saying, another authors are they are saying. Smith, he is also saying another way. HRD consists of the programs and activities. Just now I discussed it's a calendar year, a lot of training programs. So HRD consists of programs and activities, direct and indirect, instructional and individual that positively active uh, affect the development of the individuals and the productivity of the profit and profit of the organizations. So there is a lot of definitions are there. Then our operational learning experiences provided by the employees within a specified period and time to dream about the possibility of the performance improvement and the personal growth. Here you see here the, all the authors ultimately they are defined in various ways, even though the main motto and target is uh, to improvement. The overall development and improvement in all respect. So HRD is about the advancement of the knowledge, skills, and competencies, and the improved behavior of the people within the organizations for both their personal and professional needs. So I think it is sufficient for the understanding the definitions. So almost different authors, different way of they are saying. So we should learn. We should to understand the things, you know, how to, what the HRD means. HRD again, uh, the process of the determining the optimum method of the developing and improving the human resources of the organizations and the systematic improvement of the performance and the productivity of the employees through training, education, and development leaderships for the mutual attainment of the organizational and the personal goals. So, authors we can see. Now, now slowly we are targeting basically in the strategic point of view. So, author Garvin is saying the HRD is the strategic management of training, development, and the management professionals, education, intervention, so as to achieve the objectives of the organizations while at the same time ensuring the full utilization of the knowledge in details, the skills of the individual employees. Skills. So, when the pass on time is passing on, every time different different authors are trying to explain the uh, HID definitions are uh, changing. This is not as if it changes, basic concept of principle is same. Only they are trying to add on the things and defining the things. Now, the purpose of the HRD is to enhance learning, human potential, and high performance in work related environment. Then, McLean and the, they, are, they are saying, you see the year wise, you know, actually, you see the, this is a 1991, if I go back to the, to the previous slides, you see there are 1991, then 99, then 200. So, when it is a, by the virtue of the time is passing, Year by year, the definitions is also a little bit changing. We are modifying the definitions also. HRD is now in a process of activity that either initially or over the long term has the potential to develop the adults. Now, there is another aspect is that develop adults, work based knowledge, expertise, productivity, and satisfactions, uh, whether for personal or group. Good game for all the benefits of the organizations, community, nation, and whole of the humanity. So now here you see 
how the definition are refining and add on the things with a more clarity. So HRD is an organizational process comprising the skillful planning and facilitations of a variety of formal and informal learning and the knowledge process and the exercise experiences. Primarily, but not exclusively in the workplace. In order to, in order that the uh, organization's progress and the individual potentials can be enhanced through the complement, adaptability, collaborations, and knowledge creating the activity of all who work for the organization. This 2004, see, Asian Access 2004. I have started from the 1990 then onward. Now, by virtue of the 10 to 10 years, the definitions, pattern of the definitions also change. Is that add on? Lot of things. Now the terms are coming in adaptability, collaboration, complete maze, knowledge creations that are add on among the things. HRD can be defined as a set of systematic and planned activities designed by an organization to provide its members with the opportunities to learn necessary skills to meet the current and future job demands. Future job demands. Now another new words that added in the in the HR. Now 2005, these are all most latest things. Now so he is saying HRD is defined as both an operational role and a field of professional practice. The fundamental purpose of the HRD is to contribute to both long-term strategic performance and more immediate performance improvement to ensuring that the organizational member have access to resources for the development, their capacity for the performance and for making meaning of their experience in the context of the organization's needs and the requirement of the job. In gist, I can see that the two things, one of the short-term programs and the long-term program. In the short-term program, they have to see the immediate performance where is required. That improvement part is required to cope up the situations or to improve the productivity, that part. And another part is the long-term process. Then you have to see the capacity building and uh, making many of the experiences. Then, then you can also, in a long-term project, for keeping in view of the long-term project, they can develop their skills. So there are two aspects: one of the short-term process and another long-term process. Now, HRD for the managers. HRD is viewed as a subsystem of the large systems. So HRD has a proactive approach, and its main role is the development of the of enabling the capabilities. As I said earlier, this is the main purpose is to roll this development and the capability, the, the capacity building, capacity development, this part. Now, HRD is uh, concerned with uh, process values like trust, openness, explorations, managing conflict, etc. And with reducing the human wastage. That is the another aspect is that wastage means uh, optimal utilization of human resources are very much uh, needed nowadays. So whatever the existing staff, existing people are working there, so you have to utilize them in a very judicially and, and for a perfect way. So that, that's why the, the, uh, your improvement is required. So HRD entails the development of the of three, three, one, three parts, the one capabilities, commitment and cultures. So capability development entails the, the expanding the person's knowledge and the skill set. Human resource development is uh, concerned with the enhancing the workplace performance. There's another term that can be workplace performance. Means where the people are working, the environment is also an important part. So HRD when regarded as a component of HRD, as I said, the HRD is nothing is a component of the particular HRM program, human resource management. Is focused with the performance, whereas 
when considered a part of adult education and em emphasize on the learning. So I think uh, this is the way we can uh, see the particular the HRD and their subsystem and other areas. Now we have to some of the go on deep some of the functions, functions of the HRD department for employees. The aim of HRD activities of an organization is oriented towards the socialization, socializing the new employees into the organizations. Initially, when people are joining the employee, new, new entrants, uh, people are coming with the joining the company, they should know the organizations live here, what are the working place, and to uh, togetherness, basically, the what is the going on in the company and how fast they can adopt the things, knowing the things that is the important. So this is the process, this is process you can see the social agents, the new employees. At the micro level, uh, HRD refers to the enhancement of the staff quality in order to increase productivity. The goal is to help the people learn new skills that will help them perform better in their current jobs and accept future challenges. That is about year 2005 the same The efficient use of their organization's human resources is frequently the most important aspect of success, means optimum utilization of the human resources. The genuinely effect, uh, effective organizations achieves is the objectives to maximizing the potential of the human resources. As I say, potential of the silver or we can see the optimize, optimizations or maximizing, maximum, maximizing the potentials. So vice versa, what the way you can remember here. Now, the functional areas, you can say the primary functions. What are the HR deployment, the primary functions? There's the your training and development, that's called the TMD. If I see in a, in a micro level, we are not talking about the micro level, the primary functions are there are three, TMD, OD, and CD. The training and development, organizational development, and career development. There are three areas of primary functions. Similarly, in the HRD department, in order to properly accomplish these three basic functions, so if we are trying to accomplish the particular this, uh, primary functions, so some other, uh, some basic functions also required. So some uh, role analysis, employee orientation, performance appraisals, then potential appraisals, counseling, succession planning, planning and your uh, participants, participative devices, and then, uh, quality. Then your HRIS and the research, human resource information systems and the research. These are all are the different uh, functional area, basic functional area we can, which can support to the uh, main function, main primary functions. Now these are one of the diagrams that there. Uh, there's the uh, HRD employees diagram. Uh, models, some of the models are given, uh, how to uh, models are there. The training, as I said, that there are three areas, the training and development, uh, your career development and organizational development, that is TD, CD, and OD, and HRD. Now, finally, the secondary roles, the primary functions and the secondary functions. The secondary functions, there are role of analysis, development, then performance appraisals, potential, what I have seen in the slides, same thing now, it is in a structured way, it has to be. same thing in a structured way. Now, um, primary function of the HRD, uh, now training and development. Now again, uh, coming in the particular city, uh, TD. So in TD, there are leadership and executive development, management and supervisory development. There are program are like this way, right? in the training program like this. Uh, and especially for the training and development, they are leader, the, uh, senior executive level, or you can say the leadership or executive development, management development, supervision development. Another thing is your organizational development is there already in part of OE and career development. Yeah. 
the role is uh, your role analysis uh, things like the basic functions of any kind. So now coming to uh, unit number five, there is the role of HR managers where the introductions are there. We have to discuss the emerging issues faced by the HRD professionals, the role of HRD professionals and in organizations. Then we have to see and particular this the order. Before the unit number four, we have discussed about the totally the definition part, HRD, and what are the subsystem, what are the functions that we have discussed. And we are trying to understand the what is the HRD as such. Now going to what are the issues that are coming in that part? And what are the role of the manager that we have to see? HRD managers play a significant role in the organizations. HRD plays a dynamic role in coping with the changes in, in the organizations, if any changes are needed or changes are already occurred. In that situation, what the play the HRD should play, what the role they have to uh, perform. That is the answer. emerging issues facing the HRD professionals. External business environment defined in terms of the political, social, economic, technological, and legal environment, along with the internal business process, systems, and work culture process, various challenges to HR and the organizations as a whole. So externally, we have to see what are the issues. That is the main issue we see. These are all the emerging issues. So far, you can see these are all the emerging issues uh, in present scenario. Now, challenges. What are the challenges? That is the, that is the uh, encouraging the diversity in the workplace. As we know, and we have seen the globally. Not only in India, a lot of diversity uh, uh, work in the office. People are coming from the uh, rural to urban urban areas and then and in the cities. So uh, every day, new workmen or uh, employees are coming for searching the job. They are coming in there. So different uh, uh, work culture, different province uh, language are uh, uh, joining there. So that that's why the some diversity are uh, uh, enhanced and diversity are automatically there in the workplace. So um, that is one of the area and we have to encourage them uh, to work in that situation. That is one of the challenge, challenge areas. Then competing in a global economy because the, in the global economy also are uh, up and down are there. So we have uh, some target from every country, every uh, state also there are some target is there. So we have to focus on these things. Reducing competitions uh, mismatches. What are the mismatches there? So that has to be reduced. Uh, maybe in the product wise, maybe in the profit wise or money aspects. So there are a lot of aspects are there. So try to reduce the things so that uh, competitive can be responsible. So addressing the uh, requirement for the persistence of independent learning, right? promoting the organizational learning, managing the workforce generations, this is all our uh, challenging areas and where the as a HR manager uh, has to play the role, main role. Now, uh, a role of the HRD professionals in the organizations. The HRD plays a critical role in encouraging the supporting the creation of the learning environment that uh, creates and uh, uh, nurtures the knowledge in the context. Knowledge is the most important source of competitive advantage because if you are having competitive, you have to want to have competitive advantage in your organizations, you definitely you have to focus on your knowledge power all the employees should be trained enough. Then operationalizing the HRD for the workers. HRD should consider taking any and all opportunities to demonstrate 
and investigating in human capital increases the value of the company by increasing the leadership capacity. Shared responsibility for ongoing organizational development and renewal at the ability to change quickly so that all these aspects are required for the operation point of view, operationalizing the HRD for this question for the workplace. Now, HRD practitioners is an organization has three main sub-functions. They are consultant, a learning specialist, and administrator. There are three sub-functions here. Now, role as a learning specialist, HRD must provide the necessary learning and growth opportunities for both individuals and groups in order to maximize organizational change opportunities. So this is accomplished through the following methods. What are the methods? Number one is your activities for training. Number two is education and training. And three is the educational activities. So activities is very prime important uh, nowadays for successful uh, programs. Now, the human resource development manager task encompasses, because what are the tasks that encompasses? Uh, so the first thing, they were uh, conducting an audit and assessment of the learning and development requirements, as well as they start using a training plan. plan. So this is the one of the tasks for the uh, HRD managers. So assessment, audit and assessment, assessment that we have to discuss in the subsequent slides that we will see is part of the assessment part. Now, number two is the managing the organizational learning system. This learning system is also uh, have to manage it uh, in a very actual way, practical way. Now, I am only talking about a role as an administrator. Suppose in the HRD administrators. So HRD practitioners or the managers in an organization must play the following roles as a administrators. What are the roles? HRD long-term and short-term planning with the growing relevance of the HRD and its strategic role has been further enhanced so that the role can be enhanced. So there is some, some sort of strategic part he has to decide as the administrator, administrator part. Then organizing the uh, HRD unit involves the creating and maintaining the both tangible and intangible assets for the management of the organizations, organizational system and process. It are also managing facilities and the equipment. Uh, third point is planning the HRD department's uh, budgets and uh, keeping the short term and long term plans in a very important functions of the department. Now, man then manage acquisitions, development, and retention of the employees of, of the organizations as well as the staffing of the HRD department. This is one of the very, uh, in current scenario, this is a very, very vital and important, pivotal points of this. Because the acquisition, managing, acquisition, development, and the retention is very important. Because when you are trained, a particular employee, when you are trained, knowledge is there. So how to retain the employees, that is one of the main challenges. So that the company has developed in such an such employee and after one fine day he has leaving these organizations, so it is a one of the loss of the, uh, it is count as a loss. So that is uh, as the HRD uh, administrator, that part you have to see how to retain the people from the organization. Establishing the, uh, establishing the mutual beneficial inter internal and external relationship. So, they are now talking about the relationships internally and externally. Then your publicity, public relations, 
PR, such as saying the PR relations, and the building and overall employer brand of the organization. So all these things are part of your uh, your HRD uh, administrators and employees. Uh, role as a con now role as a consultant. Now role as a consultant of HRD manager is first and foremost the line manager of a staff related organizational unit or department. Second is the HRD manager act as a consultant to the company's chief executive officers, assisting line management in is involving the personal productivity and organizational issues. Now another uh, very important uh, topics that is the competency met, uh, mapping, unit number six. This topic is very important. Where we have to see what are the process, different process for competency mapping, how to judge, how to measure the things. That is important. First, we try to understand what is the competency mapping, what is the definition, what is the uh, from the uh, introductory part. Competency mapping is a process through which one assists and determines one's strengths of an individual worker and in some cases as a part of an organization. So two things are very important. You have to assist, you have to see the strength of an individual worker in terms of his capability, in terms of his adaptability, knowledge-wise, how well he stands for. So this is one of the important and as a part of it, your organizations also. So in general, it determines two, two areas, whether emotional intelligence, or you can say the emotional quotients, that is EQ, and one of the strength. Another strength of the individual is the area life, team, uh, structure, leadership skills, decision making, that is one of the another part. So, the value of the competency mapping and identifying the emotional strengths is that many employers now purposefully screen employees to hire the people with specific competencies. And during the time of interview and the selection process, that time also they have the screening the employees with you through some activity, activity test or some of the questions in such a way they are trying to uh, identify their emotional strengths where they stand for these things which are really affecting these individual in the organizations and from the overall productivity so initially they are skilling the things specific uh, competencies they have to uh, try to find out Mansfield uh, 2004 has presented a broader uh, view of the competency with words and only words. What, what he says, competent people are those who followed rules and procedures without questions. Competency means compliance that stays over the need for personnel to take more responsibility and other people. He also acknowledged three different uses of the competency. One is use of described what people need to do, need to be able to do with their with the employment. Number two is used to describe what currently happens. And three is used to describe what people are like. Now Classification of the competences. First thing, as a, some of the your uh, threshold competences. These are essential competences: genetic, uh, genetic uh, knowledge, motives, uh, your self images, what is the social role or the skill you can say, which is essential to perform a job. So, some of the uh, social competencies you have to see which are really required up to this much competencies required in, in terms of your motivations. 
differentiating the competencies. So there, these are the competencies that distinguish the superior performer from an average performer. So some you have to identify the benchmark that for uh, level so that you can differentiate the things. Competency level you can differentiate it. So that where the senior performers, junior performers, or in between, we can uh, distinguish the things. Some uh, competencies are further classified. These are, are technical or the uh, functional, that is the business awareness, then your organizational awareness, technical skills, external awareness, these are all are the uh, area for we can uh, further the competency can be looked after. Many real skills. Uh, see the customers oriented, how much years oriented, planning skill, how nicely you can plan the cross-functional perspectives, what is the his viewpoint, and in terms of his uh, uh, issue making process, concern for excellence, judgment, leadership, delegate, uh, delegating the authority and assisting the organizations risk taking, how much risk you can take. So all are part of the managing skill parts. That is also the area of the classifications. Now human attributes. Human attributes in such there the area we have to see the communication skills. How nicely you can communicate. His language power, convincing power, all this part. Teamwork and interpersonal effectiveness how nicely as a group you can take that means the leadership skill is there or not. Integrity to take to everybody in an equal way and integrate the things. And uh, is a harmony and very ethically or in a uh, coerciveness basically. The integrity there. Yeah. Transparency and focus will interacting with people. How much he has transparent? In a part of the good governance part and uh, the focus when they interact with the people how nicely you can manage so these all are the mapping the when you have the competency mapping what we mapped out this area we have to see the competencies that is some of the classification now we have to go, go to a little of the history of the competency mapping how it has come and uh, what are the uh, revolutions you can see some of the history behind it. You know the Acharya Chanakya, a well-known royal counselor and the prime minister from the very India, uh, wrote the Athasasra, which is said to be first work on the competency, competency mapping. He says all these things. In India, academy of HRD in Ahmedabad, Tibidao learning systems and the SHL India were pioneers in the designing, implementing, and conducting the assessment centers in India, in Indian organizations, thus developing the comp uh, competency uh, your mapping. Models, different models they have to offer them, they have introduced. So, with the development of the assessment centers, the Indian organizations have evolved. So that is the way the organizations evolve. The need for competency mapping, the, from there it has identified why it is needy, uh, need the so human resource management, the process of managing employees and the organizations simultaneously in order to attain shared goals. The role of human resource management, the identifying and mapping the competencies in becoming the increasingly significant. So a well-run main business should have clearly or outlined positions and a list of competencies to efficiently fulfill each functions. So competency mapping, analysis, and individuals uh, sweat in SWOT that the strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats for a better understanding which aids in this professional progress. 
within any individuals or in, a, in terms of your organizations, you have, should have some outline. What is the where do you work? The, you have to list it, list out from individual all the employees list out where they are. What is their competency and efficiency levels in the in particular their functions areas? They have these capabilities or not. That analysis are really needed. Then only you can enhance uh, the, this knowledge. First of all, identification is very much needed. Uh, SWOT that is a strength, weakness, opportunity, and uh, your threat. That is individually and organizational wise. The free individuals should have some of the strength is there, they have some weakness also there. So that has to be identified. Now, significance of the competency mapping. The competency mapping in others, the finding of the subjective knowledge and skills, behavior, and capacities necessary for the current and future workforce selections in accordance with the institutional priorities aligned with the changes. Because when the new projects are coming or new environment situations, so keeping on view of this situation at that time, what type of skill is required, what type of behavior pattern is required, that capacity you have to build up with your uh, existing staff or you can hire the people accordingly. So the analysis can assist in developing the workforce development programs to close the existing gap between the competencies required for job roles and the institutions. Here I can say give you something because present scenario. So employees has to be marketable. Those who are coming from the uh, in the institutions and the demand for the industry demand, some lot of gaps are there. That breeze has to be uh, complete so that some digging is required. So that competency levels, uh, maybe in the institution levels, uh, the students can learn uh, so that when they are be passed or pass out in, in coming in the power market, so they should be marketable and the, the, the industry demand can be, can be made. So, so that's why it is not only the organizations and individual companies have to be looked over, institutions also has to be seen uh, the capacity uh, students are really uh, um, they are developing or not. So it is the, in respect of the, your uh, institution, uh, the capacity um, uh, competency mapping are very much required in the institutions also. It's very much significant in the area. So that in the organizational levels, they can further, they can enhance their power, they can, they can enhance their skill depending on the particular areas. So basic uh, area, um, knowledge they can then only they can pass on the basis. So that's why the role of the institutions. They should have a, some programs. Significance of the competency uh, mapping. What are the significance? Once competencies are determined, the institutions can assess the appropriate training program. So once you have already identified this is the area are to be uh, developed. So accordingly appropriate training program has to be decided. Uh, project to the outcomes can be enhance the key performance areas basically. And uh, mapping the employees or the organizational skill, gap analysis, uh, this is called the gap analysis, if the relevant learning objects is critical and to accordingly have to program. Now competency mapping and the accompanying gap detections process provide the institutions with tools that are, that allow them to focus on the specific knowledge area and abilities and acquire the immediate actions. So immediate actions has to be taken up. Assist in the development of competencies uh, throughout the career planning. So not only a dynamic process, or not only the one time, maybe uh, time uh, periodically or maybe annually or by annually. So you have to develop and change the required. The training program has to be accordingly uh, best fit to be required. So competency mapping is a function of the HRD, of the, the age service. So staff selections, growth and performance evaluations in the university teaching prof uh, profession. Just now I uh, try to highlight the things uh, and emphasize the things 
the performance evaluations in the university teaching proficiency. So, the government institutions, organizations are always working to improve the institutional standards, educational quality, and the instructor effectiveness. So, the established uh, competency mapping skill, skill will be a highly valuable tool for the, your employee uh, development initiative. Now, some of the models we have to talk about, some of the models are there. So, competency models or the framework, framework we can see the this, this framework is there, is a complete collection of the competency clusters, competencies, and the behavioral indicators. To integrate all the behavioral indicators uh, that apply to various positions at all the levels of the organization, the degree of proficiency in each uh, skill of the individual is measured against the performance benchmark specified by the relevant institutions. So, proficiency is one of the important part. So now, proficiency is denoted by how much, how such a particular uh, competency a role holder must have, uh, must have, by which the will be able to produce the superior results. So generally, there are five levels of proficiency we are saying are particular the beginnings, the employee response is less reactive by the nature that we have to see. Elementary, when within this uh, own zone or the influence, the control of the employee's response, satisfactory and is the and the aware of its requirement. So that is the elementary part. And and the, another is the intermediate. Intermediate is basically the employees makes effort to exceed beyond the required expectations as a broader perspective, responds to all situations, analyzes it and perform the above the required standards. So there are, there are three, there are another two is there that next slide we can see advanced. Employee proactively uh, proactively responds to all situations and generally uh, performs consistently above the requirements of the standards. So, out of the box, maybe some, what are the, your targeting? That above the requirement, they should have been, uh, capacity they should be to build up. Expert. It shows the exception, exception, exceptional uh, foresight. Uh, creates a motivating learning environment to deliver, exceeding the desired level of performance. So, so improvement, uh, expert we can see where he knows everything and about the order we can also do the some of the more the, the delivery, the capacity is enhanced, already enhanced. So each proficiency level is specially defined through the very well uh, descriptors. Some descriptors are there, very well descriptors where it can be logged and we can see it. So which are the logically hierarchy, hierarchy so that the higher proficiency leads to and the a higher competencies. So there are so many measurement tools are there, maybe measurement tools are there. Based on this, it can, it can be recorded, it can be uh, well maintained, and uh, analysis part is also available now. A lot of, lot of software is also available in the market now. For this so competency, ice bark model is another important uh, model is there. The behavioral competencies are indications of how a person perceives himself or herself in the self-image. How you are seeing generally behaves or traits or things. Um, basically, some of the um, concept is like this. If you put something in the emerge conditions and uh, how much he has things and which the things you are uh, seeing in the image, so uh, how much he has developed. Maybe from the image you cannot identify the things. So that uh, things are there. How much he has already developed? So skill, one of the parts is there. That is the person's ability to perform something well is referred to as their skill. For example, excelling the uh, Microsoft Word. So that is one of the, one of the skill in the area. Then knowledge, information. Uh, that the person applies in a certain field, for example, a restaurant 
within the international uh, climate. And they distinguish the exceptional waiter is there, waiter uh, and waitress, who speaks very good languages, many languages. And there are so many languages that they have for his or her uh, Medicare uh, counterpart. So knowledge is one of the important part. Self-image, the person's perceptions, his or own identity, personality, the values. Example wise, the person in the oneself as a leader or a person's development. Trait is a uh, characteristic of persons for that. Behaving an excellent listener. That's one of the examples I can say. Motivate. Motive. It's like the motive. So, what motives someone's action in a specific area? That is also uh, one of the uh, modular things. That is a gross. You can say the bargain. Now, strict uh, competency. Uh, historically, you see the competency model are there. There is professional uh, ability, there is a knowledge. And in such the professional ability, there you can see the knowledge based uh, capacity capabilities, uh, the skills, and the managerial domains. And they are also identified by their functional abilities. Social maturity is called the SQ. So, KQ, SQ. SQ is a social maturity which is comprised of an individual's personality. Social maturity is a, in a difficult concept to grasp. How, in a, in a, how the way he has, the concept is how much he has, in a, in a difficult conditions, uh, we have to judge it. So SQ would be the synopsis with the social responsibility. So we can say the social, responsible, ethical, uh, human, and the personal moral. We can somewhat the equivalent uh, of the SQ. We can say it. Social maturity, SQ. So which is uh, comprised of an individual's personality, social um, maturity in a difficult concept to grasp. SQ should be things. Uh, so I think it's the same slide. Okay, anyway. Then your uh, application skill, AQ, is also as a practical skills. Tells us, tell, tells us the whether the manager knows what to do and how to do uh, in the business. So it describes it describes the manager's capacity to use the information, his or her job. So that is the application skill. Now approaches, the development of the company model. What are the approaches? So basically, there are uh, two approaches in the competency model. The one is the job-based approaches, and another, another is a competency-based approach, in a job-based approach, and the and your competency clusters are the identified for a particular identified uh, job positions. Then it starts with the job analysis. Uh, identification of the knowledge, skills and abilities required for an effective job performance. So behavioral uh, indicators are grouped into a different competencies. So what the important um, is what are the behaviors that is are very important. So here we are talking about the, uh, the approaches. Now uh, the core competency in the model is based on the visions, mission, and the value system of the organizations. So there are three things based on this. We can say first step is the uh, profiling of the organizations. So you have to profile, first of all, you have to see the organization's profile. So that is the first. Second step is the roles or the job profiles. The detailed job analysis may be done, may be done, uh, which includes the both job descriptions defined in terms of the knowledge, skills, abilities. Third step is your identification of the performance indicators. This is the then two or three stages. Now, fourth step is the uh, superior perspectives of the performance. And finally, uh, five step is the compilation. This is the most uh, cumbersome and complex process, tagging exercise. For comparisons of all these things, but anyhow we have to keep it 
so that uh, for fulfilling the things, definitely then defining the competency, and finally the finalization is on the validation of the model. That model has to be validated. To be validated. Now, food identifies the uh, competencies. So, competency mapping is an activity uh, that may be that may be completed uh, completed by a large group of the individuals. It is critical to have a conceptual background and understanding the company, knowledge of business, organization, management, behavioral sciences in advantages. So, HR managers, management graduates, and the applied psychologists are also well qualified for the job. So most universities and the specialists in the human resource teach the applicants to be applicable. Now competencies can be identified by one or more of the persons uh, listed below. Experts in the particular field. I mean, who can who can judge this? Who can identify the competencies? That is, experts in the particular field who can easily identify the uh, competencies. That HR professionals, job analysts. Psychologist, industrialist, line managers, current and the past leaders, supervisors, uh, reporting and the reviewing officers, and internal internal customers. So these are all that uh, identifies the computer competencies. Assessment centers. Now coming to assessment centers is the one of the centers. This technique basically to select uh, the selection was first used in the, in the military uh, and then afterwards it has uh, in the corporate level also corporate sphere it is already uh, well was now uh, this thing assessment part and now most of the organizations they have a now assessment center is there basically it is a database where you can keep all the record and then time to time you can analyze this part and any purpose is also so assessment center outcomes are the increasingly being the utilized to determine the uh, type of sequence of the developmental developmental activities done by the human resource uh, functions. Assessment centers give a profile of each individual's strengths and the limitations. Assessment center is just a tool or procedure that organizes organizations employ uh, to choose the qualified individuals for the certain roles. So we can understand the what are the functionality and how much uh, benefits are there from the assessment centers. Now assessment center and the designing and the assessment center that there are various steps of this involved. Deciding the purpose, identifying the characteristics of the dimensions or the dimensions of the measures, identifying the assessment tools of the techniques, like this. The most common ones are the basket experience exercise, role play, leader, leaders, leaderness, group discussions, behavioral event interview, overall presentations, written case studies, case analysis are the part of the assessment part. Then establishing the linkage with the characteristics and the competencies. Okay, what are the characteristics and what are the competencies? That linkage is required. So so this assessment center that we can do this pilot test of the validations. So a lot of test procedures there to validate the design and the pilot run is all in two or three assessment centers is required. So basically the conformity because the, what the things are going on is all are to be tested I mean in a pilot form then after that. So design and the assessment formats assessors and the, are the supposed to notice and document essential behaviors display are for the candidate part person and evaluating the behavior test. So some standards assessment template can be done. So all competencies are specified uh, using the level of some of the framework is there. One is your uh, thing is your behavioral anchored rating bars. That is in short bars, B A R S. A bars detects the Objectable, uh, observable behaviors, and that differentiate between the effective or bad uh, performance. You can identify the things. Based on this, you can point out the skills. Interviews are also important. Inter interaction between the interviewer and the candidate constitute the interview approach. So all this part are uh, 
Then some question edits are also there, questions based on these employee, the level of these questions, then some psychometric test is also there. It is a common tool for the assessing the behavior. Then critical uh, incidents, the critical incidents is a systematic technique for identifying the behaviors that uh, contribute to the success of the failure or failure of the individuals, why it has happened for the post analysis purposes. So, all right, since it's a specific scenario. So, this is the way, uh, is the assistance and then gap analysis are one of the aspects. So, how much uh, the gap is there that can be identified and you can analysis it. And then describe the mathematical model. Other uh, methods are include like this, your role plays, uh, your case studies, exercises. This is good discussions are very important. So, hence, we can say that we can conclusion in that way, the competency mapping is one of the most accurate method uh, for the determining the individual's work. And we can see the behavioral competencies in our organization. So, after uh, going through this, now we can understand the competency mapping, how much it is related to the development of organizations. Obviously, it is a part of your HR part, part and uh, then only you can uh, see the individuals the board are required. So, assessment center is one of the, you can say it is just like a server where all these inputs, all these alternatives, all these outcomes are there. From there, we can also further we can develop the things and we can go ahead accordingly. So, uh, I think now this is the way. Uh, we can now finish the sessions. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, now uh, this block is complete now. So, thank you very much.